for sale. We're in van. <clears throat> Which is very exciting. This is my Moroccan courtyard. It's been raining the last few days and it was too dark inside to get the cards well lit. But now the sun has come out. There's a very big tradition around here, because we're in Brittany now, of the Groac, or Groage, as it's pronounced in Breton, in the Breton language. Um, and they're water fairies, um, and they live in wells and springs, and they tempt people in, turn them into fish, and then they serve them <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> So I've been trying to research a lot about the Groage um, and I spent many hours and eventually tracked down not a well so much because they seem to be hidden now but I did discover an old well from around 2000 years ago that was unearthed recently um, for a building project that was a block of flats going down. And it turns out that it's just 100 metres from where I'm staying. And then about 500 metres from where I'm staying, there is an esoteric bookshop that sells tarot cards. So we have two new decks, which I've put together. Whoops. We just lost one. One is a universal Celtic tarot and the other is an Afro-Brazilian tarot that's based on the Orishas and the Candoble uh, religion. And so we're going to use those today to try and find out our first messages of what to expect while we're here in Cannes. And I feel like the Groage or Groac is really reaching out. Um, I just did myself a personal read and it said just get yourself to some of those monolithic stones you've got some shadow work to do so actually let's just do the bells i forgot to do those Something on the second bell flew down and landed in the bell. Whether it was a dried blossom falling for autumn. Yeah, it was a little tiny leaf. But it absolutely went for the bowl. So I'm going to pop those cards back and shuffle again. For the bells have said clear the air. Clear the space. That's so funny, that card was out before and it's come out once again. So, we have the Hierophant, which I've never seen before because they're new cards. This is about making offerings to the natural world. He has a, a sickle, which is a moon-shaped knife to cut through the esoteric layers <clears throat> and he's offering well to me they're like snowdrops he's offering to go into the sort of notion of winter um, it's like an offering for the birth of spring so a lot of the messages that we're getting from the cards for this month in van is about our connection to nature and working on fixing our bodies our dna uh, removing historic traumas van is a very interesting medieval town but before that it was a roman town and before that it belonged to a people called the vanitans or the vanishans and they're linked to the word veneer friends because they were a very friendly tribe so there's a lot of very ancient history the medieval part of the town and its ramparts its stone walls that were the defensive part are still there and all around the medieval part are half timber framed houses and all of these half timber framed houses instead of the wood being black or plain they've all been painted very beautiful colors 
And there is a real sense of a kind of modern nursery rhyme going on, which amuses me in that I spent a lot of time many years ago writing what I called cursory rhymes. And there are some of them on my website that you can read. And they're about taking the nursery rhyme <clears throat> and changing it to something much more comical and dark. And I feel like that's part of the journey we're about to go on, is a kind of comical darkness. Um, and it's into the heart of the natural world with our physical body. So we have the Hierophant standing in front of an Idrisil tree, making offerings, and that's another thing I've been told I have to do. I have to start making offerings to the spirit world, to the fairy folk, to the Groage or Groac. And this usually entails taking, in many cultures, alcohol, um, or taking other products that the natural world has given us that then we have transformed, not personally, but it's better if it's something you do do personally, but things that we have transformed into something that would delight us and offering that to the natural world. It's no good offering the natural world fruit because the natural world made the fruit anyway. You've done nothing with it. So it's really important to take what nature offers, transform it just as we're transforming ourselves and to then return it to nature and say, look, here's an offering of something I made for myself or that was made for human consumption and I give it back to you as thanks. So then we have... The Queen of Wands. Now, she represents the luck and the flow, the energy that moves towards us when we connect with trees and the natural world. And surrounding her are runes. And the, the energy I'm getting from this card is that there's a lot more light language flowing towards us. New frequencies, new codes. So I've also brought with me today out here the good tarot. And I'm going to use those as clarifiers. So can we please clarify? Oh, look, there's my first fly. <laughs> much smaller than the ones in Ekelgrang. Oh, I wanted to explain something that's very significant about Ekelgrang. Ekelgrang, um, when I was staying there, Ekelgrang means to take the husk off of a grain and it's to do with the milling process. So taking the whole wheat part off and separating out because years ago white bread was considered very expensive because it had to go through a very long process to be cleaned off so i was making a lot of bread in echogram to honor the energy of the place and now i'm here being told that i need to make offerings to the groash so can we please have some clarifiers for the hierophant Can we please have some clarifiers for the Hierophant and the Queen of Wands? <clears throat> so we have the Hermit. <clears throat> this is talking about being given the keys to doorways into the soul to search out for these deeper esoteric messages um, that have so far been hidden from us because it wasn't our place to see them yet. Everything comes in a moment. And this is coming with the four of fire. <clears throat> this four of fire always represents for me 
the portal again. So we've got a doorway and we've got a portal and it's about allowing this energy of the portal to pass over us and settle on us. But you only do that by changing your frequency. She plays a flute to change her frequency. And the four of fire is about returning to a happy home. But in the energy of this card, it's really about returning to the natural world and the sacred home that we can set up in the natural world, looking out for the natural world and the natural world looking out for us. And that will bring 19, the sun, and the sun will come out. Oh, and it just did again. So bringing us all of our desires, our, our, the things we most wish for in life. So it's interesting that the next stage in our journey is a greater connection to the natural world. So can we please have some more messages from the Groach? really interesting there's two decks and yet most of the cards coming out are from the celtic oracle deck <clears throat> so very interesting we have the first one of the Afro-Brazilian. We have the Celtic devil and we have death. <laughs> death and transformation and rebirth. So this Celtic devil has a man and a woman chained by the neck, which is the old energy frequencies that we're removing and they're chained to his tongue and the idea behind this is that the spoken word has us chained it's like a charm that was spoken but not by an individual it's not like you have some kind of energetic curse upon you it's talking about the energetic curse in a way of the natural world at that time the frequency resonating from the earth during the age of pisces was very much one of chastising um, and keeping people locked from themselves and chained to not so much a cruelty <clears throat> but to a frequency of distortion that we have to work through so then we have the death card and this is about the body taking off because in this card the figure is dressed in something that's not their true resonance and that's very much the energy of blue lunar storm year not who do you present yourself as but who are you underneath who are you when you remove everything that you have around you, not just the trappings of clothing, but the frequency of truths that you push out to mask your absolute soul truth? Who are you underneath all of that? And then we have the Seven of Cups. This is about wanting the dragon's treasure and the dragon again represents the energy of the earth and this is a card that talks about wanting all that the dragon has in store for us but before you've done before you're prepared before you're ready to accept what rewards are coming towards us all because we have the card of justice but again this this is the justice of the natural world. This is universal law, but it comes from the frequency of the earth fed by the truths of the cosmos. And we need to start to humble ourselves to the natural world. The natural world, as I've said before, particularly in the pig reading, the natural world loves us. The natural world wants to hold our hand and take us to beautiful places. 
It wants to ensure that we have the most divine future. But we have to, at some point, come towards the earth with a sense of humble truth. And then we have the Six of Wands, which is an elfin, an elf, riding on a horseback. This is a card of victory, but behind, look, all the magic folk are standing with their staffs of magic, their powers, and they're just so pleased that you have ignited the force of nature inside you and it's burning from within you. It's very much that sense of the fires within uh, having transformed us into the Celtic Emperor. And this is, for the moment, where we're going. We're heading eventually towards Hierophant, but we have to go on a journey first. And the Emperor is the pruner. Uh, the Empress births all life, and the Emperor prunes things so that things can live symbiotically. So this is about us finding a way to live in harmony with the natural world and each other. And that's part of the journey of this month in van that we're on. So can we please have some clarifiers? 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 Okay, so it starts with the Eight of Air. I've put something down on this wonderful ceramic table to hold the cards down, but I can't pick them up now. So we have the Eight of Air. The Eight of Air is releasing old thought patterns, the way in which we used to think, and allowing these thoughts to just fly away, to take, to soar into the cosmos so that we can bring about a new earthing energy. So this is the queen of earth, and she's very much about transformative energy, but she's covered in ivy, and ivy fascinates me as a plant because it's very much a plant that talks to us about something of absolute beauty, and yet its life can clamber around an oak tree, choke it and pull it to the ground. And so she's almost being covered in uh, ivy across here. Ivy is growing. It's kind of, she's talking about how you have to transform those thought patterns. Those things that you consider a part of yourself, they have to go because you've got to learn to prune the ivy so that it can live symbiotically with the oak tree. She also has the triskelum, the three spiral up here in her antler. This is very much a symbol attached to lots of the Neolithic stones around here. And it's actually when I was given the keys to this beautiful house, um, it has a triskelum key ring. So that's gonna very much, I think, feature. It's also on the back of the cards. So, we have the Page of Water and the Six of Water. And these are really talking about the thoughts that we release are attached to deep-seated emotions that pain us within our sacral, but they're not, as such, they're not truly our emotions. They're emotions that we inherited in our DNA because there's a lot to do with this release of old traumas that are connected to the DNA. So let's just pick up the cards and ask for another message and see what we get. What else would you like to tell us please about our stay here and what we're all working on while we're here? <clears throat> The 
clouds are moving so fast today. There's been a lot of very uh, tricky weather. So we have the Page of Pentacles. And this is this is talking about messages yet to come. Our new place in the world. There is a manir. That tomb behind that doorway is a place where uh, in Neolithic times the dead were buried. And this is often this energy that's attached to our DNA feels like something very deeply buried that needs to be brought back out. I... Uh, I have in my personal readings and the energy I've been picking up, I have been told to put crystals back on now because I need to walk with some protection around me because apparently <laughs> I'm going to be disturbing some very old energies for good, but I need to remember to guard my energy while I'm doing this. And he is holding the Triskelon. And the Triskelon is seen as a very lucky symbol, a symbol that keeps us safe. It's like a, a medallion. It's very much connected to uh, ancient Greece, Sicily, the Isle of Man and the Celts. It's been used by all of those. And sometimes in Greece, in the center, because they're meant to be three bent legs or three spiraling energies, a movement forwards, a, a pathway. Um, sometimes they have Medusa's head in the middle um, as a warding off evil. So this is about being prepared to go into some dark places and I don't want you to be scared. <laughs> it's all gonna be fun, but we've got to see some some darkness. And then we have the moon. Um, and in this card, this is about hidden esoteric knowledge coming in. Now, a lot of the Condomble rituals involve dance trance and very much about the physical movement of the body to release molecules. So when we had that ninth moon of molecular bliss, that was the beginning of settling joy in our bodies. And there is a real sense of movement has got to come up now. We've got to start to feel that we're not just static. So you really do need to try and connect with your body. And that's also why we had that connection with the feet. Because we had to prepare our feet to take us on this physical journey. Because that's part of this movement now to transform things. And uh, it's... The, the, the figure in this card holds uh, a sword and they're cutting through the layers and dimensions of distortions to draw in this old emotional language to, to highlight it and make a separation. And then we have the Ace of Wands. Oh, look, the tiny... Oh, I was going to show you the tiniest little fly on me then. Um... There's a torque bracelet holding a wand, but this wand is talking about cosmic crystal energy. Because <clears throat> we're dealing with the past in order to draw in the new energies of the future. And crystals, as I've said, I've been told to return to my crystals now. I had to have a period where they weren't with me um, two months um, without having them around me, touching them, wearing them, because I needed to find my frequency. And now it's time to find yourself your crystals and begin to feel the messages hidden within them. And I think I've probably got to return some of my crystals to the Meneers uh, to make some changes. It's a branch now trying to cover me. So then we have the Four of Cups. This is a fascinating Four of Cups because it's about integrating the past with the present to make a new future. It's not like most Four of Cups where the energy is about 
uh, having holding on to the three cups that you know so well and the cosmos bringing in a brand new holy grail and I'm, I'm saying holy grail because the arthurian legends also took place in this area in a forest called flore de brosselande and uh, merlin's tomb is here and uh, the lake of the fairies there's another lake which Vivian, the Lady of the Lake, lifted Excalibur out from. So there's so much magic for us to explore here. And so in this card, it's like an exchange. They're bringing together the past and the present to create a new pot. It's almost, imagine that these pots are kind of fluid. And as they push these two pots together, they will become one. So it's kind of returning to an energy of three from four. So having a healing, but a healing is only completed when you integrate that which made you feel ill or ill at ease and bringing that together with the present to create a new energy that can take you forwards. And then we have the nine of cups. <clears throat> and this is about being ready to birth that new frequency to have a brand new energy um, it's like you understand all that was and you've integrated it you've pulled your cups together to create what will be birthed which is the tenth cup which is the completion so let's see if we can have, can you please have some clarifiers on that last message. Can you please have some clarifiers on that last message. Can we please have some clarifiers on that last message. <laughs> so, as I said, uh, what was the first one? I just need to go back and check. The page of pentacles is coming with the page of fire. She's a tricky little sprite, this one. She's so playful. She's kind of very much uh, the, the fun side of the grey folk, the fairies, the fae. Um, but she's sparking up that new energy. She's the frequency behind the journey because there's something very modern about her and cosmic as well as being the energy of the past and so she's talking about that kind of timelessness you know van as i said has all these kind of nursery rhyme looking houses but there's something about the energy in this area which is like a time vortex a soup it's like all of history is present here at the moment to be tapped into and that's very much what this is about tapping into the past and the future to create this new creative, passionate energy to move forwards. And then we have the Queen of Water, Ran, or a Groage. You know, the message of a goddess, a sprite, a fairy of the water, bringing you this frequency and talking about which is what I sniggered at, even though I've not read it yet. This returning of four to three is the message that she's bringing. Integration of old emotions that are uncomfortable into the body to bring about the healing frequency of the body so that we can reach this point of being ready to birth something totally new. So that's the first message. I'm now being blinded by the sunshine. Um, I'm going to go off and see if I can catch a boat, if they're running, if there's enough time, to the Ile d'Arts, which is a small island just from the port of Van. And on the very bottom tip, there are some Neolithic 
many years, I believe. I'm not really sure, but I'm being told I've got to go and connect with a Neolithic stone. So that's my plan. Let's hope that the weather stays shiny and sunny. I've had to put long trousers on and shoes and socks. I'm going to put on my nice uh, Merlin-esque cape. <laughs> cape. It's a jackety coat, but it's very much like something from Star Wars. <laughs> anyway, hopefully I'll get to a Manir and we can all share the joy there. So anyway, Wassail from the Moroccan Garden in Vannes.